The human body is composed of hundreds of types of cells. Stem cells are unique in that they can repair damaged organs and rebuild vital tissues in the body. They accomplish this by multiplying and transforming into cells that are needed for repair. Well, there are many different types of stem cells, but there are two main categories, adult or embryonic stem cells. An embryonic stem cell line begins with an embryo, and those embryos are usually donated by a couple who's gone through fertility treatment and has completed their family. This fertility treatment is called in vitro fertilization, or IVF, which refers to the creation of fertilized embryos outside of a woman's womb. We then grow those embryos out to what's called the blastocyst stage. The inner cells inside this embryo can be removed and can be plated out, cultured, and turned into a stem cell line. The embryonic blastocyst can also be implanted into a woman's uterus to grow into a full-term child. So in order to form uh, embryonic stem cells, you must destroy the embryo. That's the only way uh, that it can be done using those IVF embryos. The other type of stem cells that researchers are working with are called adult stem cells. By adult, we mean that they already exist in our body in different organ systems and they're there to repair damage and age into that body throughout our lifetime. And virtually every organ appears to have a stem cell compartment. The main difference between the two types of stem cells is that the embryonic stem cells have the property that they can divide indefinitely. Adult stem cells can't do that. You grow them in the laboratory for a while and then they stop growing. Uh, the other property that the embryonic stem cells have that the adult stem cells don't is that they can turn into any tissue of the body whereas adult stem cells turn into the tissue that they were derived from. The ability to turn into any tissue of the body is called pluripotency, which makes the embryonic stem cell highly adaptable in fighting degenerative diseases. Despite its scientific progress, ethical concerns about embryonic stem cell research have been voiced by doctors, scientists, women's groups, and ethicists. In embryonic stem cell research, what makes the controversy so intense is that a nascent human being, that is an embryo at the one week stage, is being destroyed for its body parts, if you will, its stem cells. It is to use nascent human life as a corn crop ripe for the harvest. Well, there are probably as many definitions of human life as there are scientists. But one thing I'm absolutely convinced of is that an embryo in a dish is not a human life, and it's certainly not a person. Well, I don't think that's a scientific statement. I think it is a human organismal life in the dish. And it's a common tool of rhetoric in uh, political arguments to win by redefining the terms. I don't think either side should do that. Well, the scientific definition of human life, I think within the context of what we're talking, um, uh, talking about is that human life begins at conception. It's admittedly very tiny. It's admittedly in its earliest stages of development. And so the question is, does it have the moral worth that we assign to later stages of human development? Fertility treatments are now so effective that the vast majority of time we have excess embryos. And the question is, what do we do with those embryos? Do we pick them up? Do we just throw them in the trash? Do we discard them? Or do we find something useful to do with them? The issue isn't about leftover embryos. The issue is whether or not we can use human life instrumentally. To those individuals who may have moral issues with human embryonic stem cell research, I would say, I would advise, I would plead uh, education. Although the value of human life and the issue of personhood are an ongoing concern in the debate over stem cell research, it would be limiting to reduce that debate to a pro-life versus pro-choice battle. The reality is that some doctors, scientists, and ethicists of both pro-life and pro-choice persuasions continue to be concerned about the consequences of stem cell research. One of those consequences is women's health. Normally, a woman's ovaries release one or two eggs a month. In order to extract many eggs for in vitro fertilization, or IVF, doctors use what is known as ovarian hyperstimulation, injecting powerful fertility drugs into a woman's body to force it to produce a dozen or more eggs at a time. The eggs are then extracted from the uterus using a needle. Nowhere in the world has anybody done any research on the aftermath 
of the drugs on women who've been donating, or often it's not donating, selling eggs uh, across any of the countries that are involved in this kind of trade. They, they become forgotten. I'm actually just back from London where I attended an international conference on natural cycle minimal stimulation IVF. And for two days I listened to world-class fertility specialists, embryologists from all over the world talking about how dangerous the drugs are that they use on women for fertility treatments. We don't know the long-term effects of taking these medications yet. So in terms of are there long-term um, studies on these drugs? No. One of the dangerous conditions that doctors are becoming increasingly aware of is ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome, or OHSS. So it's a syndrome, OHSS, that's the result of the ovary being kind of put into hyperdrive. It's producing a lot of eggs. And when you do that to a person's body, it also produces other changes in the body, which can actually, in some people, can uh, ha have the uh, risk of death. Ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome is a reality. I um, was the person who contacted the mother of a girl who died from it. It's a serious consideration, and if you go on to the websites of IVF clinics around the world, you find that it's acknowledged as a risk. Well, the list of dangers for egg retrieval in women would include the OHSS, which would, in and of itself, put a woman at risk for um, pulmonary complications, fluid imbalances, a stroke, death. Besides OHSS, there's also the risk of clotting issues that can occur um, from the drugs alone. You can also have in the future, you can have adhesions, so you can have problems getting pregnant or, or difficulties in the future. And I think that in terms of the women who are considering voluntarily or even for money, donating their eggs, they need to be aware that this is not a procedure that is not without risk. And one of those risks, unfortunately, is death.